<clears throat> I always do that for some reason. What's up, guys? War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're bringing you the crowd pleaser fan favorite ball lightning build. As you guys seen in the footage, not only does it just smack everything in the game, includes Uber Lilith, but it's obviously the best build in the game. So I'm going to break down everything you need from the skills, the gear, the vampiric powers, as well as a very awesome Paragon board. So first, let's get it out of the way. I got to give a huge shout out to Nuax and my community over on Twitch for the build in the shell for all of this. We came in and we had one from last season and we adopted it and changed it. So big shout out to him and the community over on Twitch. So let's hop into this and break everything down and just kind of the setup that we have and some changes and gear pieces that you guys are going to be able to use if you don't have certain ones. So starting off, we are doing Firebolt. The reason that we're doing Firebolt is because we are going to be using it in our enchantment slot. Okay, we got Firebolt in our enchantment slot. This is going to allow any damage that we do to cause burning to enemies, but more on that later. Now, we're not running a basic in this build, as you guys can see here. We're not running a basic. Pretty much every version of the build that you can come up with doesn't run a basic. There's only a few that I've seen that actually run Arc Lash, which is really good for either increased move speed, but mainly for the additional cooldown for your skills. We're not opting for that, so no core or basic skill for us. Same thing with our core skill. We are also running zero core skill. Okay, we're going to do three points into potent warding. Every time we do an attack, you're going to see our resistances go up. A big showcase here. We're at 62% shadow resist. As soon as I attack, we go to 70%. This is a very, very good ability. I really like this to kind of help you mitigate your resistance um, differences. So then we're going to do one point devastation for mana and then three points into elemental dominance. When we cast above 50, our mastery, which is ball lightning, will deal 9% multiplicative damage. Now, in my original version, we did run, did run ice armor. And you're probably asking, well, War, why aren't you running ice armor? Well, we just don't need it. Now, I will say during the leveling process and until you can fix your mana, and resource issues definitely run ice armor with the first node for mana regen once you're able to kind of handle all of your resource gen you no longer need it at least in this version so starting off we're going to be doing flame shield into mythic or mystical flame shield this is just going to give us a mana's cost if you feel like you are struggling in your squishy you could do shimmering for even more heal but i find you don't need that you absolutely you just smack everything you kill them you heal up with every single attack so do this for just uh, some even more spam. Then, of course, we're maxing teleport into shimmering. Whenever we teleport, we get damage reduction. This is huge. We got one point to elemental attunement, so that way, on a lucky hit, it'll reset one of our three defensive skills. Mainly, we always want teleport, or we hope that teleport gets reset, but the other two are good as well. We are maxing out glass cannon for 40% more damage or increased damage, but we take more damage. If you don't want to have this so maxed out, that's fine. You could just reduce this down, but the increased damage is really good. Then, of course, Frost Nova into Mystic or Mystical, so that way everything is vulnerable. Now we're going to come down and we're going to take Lightning Spear. This is a big change in the build. Um, typically, I don't really like Lightning Spear, but after playing it, it's actually really, really good. So we're going to put Lightning Spear into Invoked. Lightning Spear stuns enemies. This really helps us on a crit. This really helps us with all of our damage multipliers when we perform CC onto an enemy. Now, we do manually cast this, and then Unstable Currents will also cast this. Keep in mind that when Unstable Currents is active and it's going, and it fires a Lightning Spear, it's going to apply all these nodes that we have on there. So just keep that in mind when you're using um, Lightning Spear just in general or any other variation of the build. Then we have Align the Elements for more damage reduction, and then we max out Mana Shield for damage reduction as well as Protection for Barrier. We should always have a barrier. With as many balls on the screen, we should always be hitting enemies and always have a barrier. Every skill that we have is a cooldown except for Ball Lightning. There is no reason why we don't have barrier. Next, we're going to come down and we're going to take Inner Flames for increased damage to healthy enemies, but more importantly, Devouring Blaze so we get the increased... Um, critical strike damage which is why we have firebolt enchantment in our slot every attack is causing the enemy to be burned and then we deal increased 
crit damage against burning enemies. If they're immobilized, which will happen from our stuns, uh, the bonus is increased. Next, of course, we're doing Static Discharge for a chance to form Crackling Energy into Invigorating Conduit, which upon absorbing it, this is one huge way to fix our mana issues for this build because it is mana hungry. Everyone that we pick up gives us 12 mana. You see our uh, resource, our mana just refill instantly as you guys saw in the footage. And then, of course, our main skill, Ball Lightning into Wizards. Every time we hit the same enemy for four times, we spawn Crackling Energy. It happens every two seconds or every two times per cast. And we just spam this. Even though it costs 31, all of our reductions, it's going to be nuts. We just spam it. You never have to use mages. Then we're going to come down to our ultimate. We're doing unstable currents. Because that way when we use this, we have a chance to cast either another ball lightning, another lightning spear. And we also have a chance to cast either charge bolts or chain lightning. Very, very good ultimate. And we get increased attack speed when we do this. And then, of course, um, we're not opting for Supreme. We don't necessarily need this. I don't think you need it. I've tested it with and without. I don't think you need it. Then we're going to do Coursing Currents. Gives us a chance for more Chris Strike Chance. And then Electrocution. So when we're dealing um, Lightning or Shock Skill damage to enemies, that um, after they've been crit, they deal less damage to us. We should crit more often than not. And then down to our key passive. Now, this is where a lot of people kind of go back and forth with variations of the build. A lot of people really opt for Veer's Mastery because close enemies, this is basically a melee build. You're going to be taking increased damage, or they will be, from our shock skills. And then they deal even less damage to us. So this is one way to appear more tanky. And then Crit Strikes increase these bonuses by 25%. So really, you go to 40 and then you go to 45. This is really good. However, I really feel that overflowing is just better. So when we pick up a Crackling Energy, when it hits an enemy every time we pick it up, we don't care about the damage that Crackling Energy actually does. It's each time the enemy is hit by one, our shock skill cooldowns are reduced. And then it's reduced by an even larger percentage when we're doing it against elites. So our shock skills that are on cooldown are going to be Unstable Currents, Teleport, very important, and then Lightning Spear in this case. If you're opting to not run Lightning Spear because you're running Ice Shield, then it's really just Unstable Currents and Teleport, which is even better. So every time our shock skills are going to deal damage, we're going to re be resetting these skills. It's insane. I highly suggest never not running Overflowing Energy. Now, as you guys saw in our enchantment slots, we have Firebolt, but we're also running Ball Lightning. This is where we're going to have a chance to just spawn another one. This is just more and more ball lightning. It's really great. So that way we don't have to spam every single one. Now into the gear, the juice. Okay. Now there's going to be some few options here and uh, we're going to talk about a few of them. Now, the main ones, we're going to swap these out. As you guys can see, we're going to swap these out for our normal stuff. You can really just end up using... Snow Veal, which will give us with if you're using Ice Armor. Otherwise, you want to be using God Slayer Crown. This is going to give you a huge damage increase because when you stun, freeze, or immobilize elites, you pull everybody in like you would a Remnants, and then you do increased damage to everybody for three seconds. Up to 60% is a huge damage multiplier. But if you don't have that, you can run a Helm like this one and just have Ice Armor, or you could do um, Disobedience. You could also run something Unwavering, so you take less damage against crowd-controlled enemies. So there's a lot of options here if you don't have God Slayer. It isn't required, but you will get a huge boost from it. Next, of course, is Remnants. This is by far the best chess piece that the Sorcerer has. This is going to pull everybody in. We deal increased damage because uh, we stun them, and it's just wonderful. If you don't have this, you can run a chess piece like this where you also have snow veal and then you can swap this out for something else again unwavering there's a lot of other options that you can do you could do the one where uh, crowd control effects and get increased for a longer duration you have some options here but i'm just showcasing a chess piece and helmets just in case if you don't have these because you are not required to have these it just puts the build over the top and then we have control in our gloves for even more damage against cc in our pants, we got to Bolt's Will. Again, you can swap the pants out. I don't have the pants actually in my inventory right now. But you can swap them out for normal pants that just give you increased to Ball Lightning. Those are really, really good. Even more resistance. But I will tell you that to Bolt's Will is a huge damage multiplier on this build. Then, of course, we're doing Ghost Walkers. Probably my favorite power in the game. I like speed. I want to be moving. And we want to be moving fast. So Ghost Walkers gives us the Unstoppable. And we have a few ways to do that. We got Teleport that gives us Unstoppable. 
Flame Shield, which gives us immune, which is unstoppable. And then our Evade with our new Vampiric Powers, Metamorphose, also makes us unstoppable. So our max 25% increase is always going to be alive. And more importantly, we're going to be able to move through enemies freely. On our weapon, we got Gravitational. This is the main power for the build. You cannot play the build without this. You have to have it. Ball Lightning orbits around us, which is what you see here. And we deal increased damage. Otherwise, if you take this off, this is not the case. And they're just going to... Can I actually even cast it? Um, you're just It's just going to shoot out in front of you. It's really, really bad. Uh, next, we have Disobedience in the Amulet. Big shout out to my chat for this. So, Disobedience... If you get a max roll like I have here, you're going to add about five to 6,000 armor. We have 5,000 armor. When we start hitting enemies, you're going to add 6,000 armor. Let me go to Sanctuary and just showcase this really quick for you guys because this is insane. I normally have Disobedience like on my pants or my helmet because it's just easy to place it there. And you would think that in a build like this, you would want more damage like Conceited or Gravitational on your amulet. So that way you can do even more damage. Trust me, that's not the case. With Sorcerers, you're pretty squishy, and survivability is a little bit different this season with the resistances. So I definitely suggest putting this on here. So adding up to 6,000 armor just makes you darn near unkillable. So if you guys can see here, we're at 5,100 armor, and you're going to see me just hit this guy, and we're going to go up all the way to five th or to 10,000. You max at 85 or 85%. This is the highest. This is where you max at. So when you have that, you max out. If you do not have this in your amulet, you cannot max out. You get stacking up to 99%. You cannot get this any other way. Disobedience 100% goes into the amulet. Next, we got Prodigies. We got the basic one. I'm still trying to find a max one. But every single time we use a cooldown, which is all of our skills, we gain 15 mana. This is required for the build. You need this to help with your mana resources. Now, the last one is Conceited. Now, you will pick up a lot of mana seeing it just refills. We have Conceited here. We deal increased damage every time we have a barrier. Again, we have a barrier with Flame Shield, and then we always have a barrier with um, Protection here. Always is going to happen. And then last, we have Storm Swell. Okay, you got Storm Swell here which every time we deal damage to a vulnerable enemy and have a barrier, we absolutely slap. M more than most of the time, they're always going to be vulnerable, especially when you dash. Otherwise, you're just going to have very small windows when they're not vulnerable, so this should always be live. Now, back to the gear pieces, I do want to mention Flicker Step here. On the higher end of builds, you can absolutely swap this. Ghost Walkers for Flicker Step. As you evade, you reduce your cooldown, so you can pretty much have a very, very good uptime on unstable currents. It just makes the build even more insane. I, I still prefer Ghost Walkers, but Flicker Step is very good. Um, also on Storm Soul, you can actually swap this out. You don't. This isn't required. You kind of have a flex spot here. You can swap this out for the um, the currency one, where uh, unstable currents has a chance to fire a second time. I can't remember what the the power is called, but you can actually have that one on there which makes it cast a second time, which is still really strong. Uh, I don't have it on here, but yeah, you could definitely do that one as well. Now, Vampiric Powers. Okay, four of these you have to have and you have a flex spot. So let's go over them. You got Domination. This is essentially another control. This is required for the build. We're always going to CC. You're going to do insane damage. Now we have Metamorphose. Okay, so this is where we're making enemies vulnerable. As we evade, you see how he goes vulnerable? When we evade with our Metamorphose, we apply a Vampiric Curse. We pair this with Prey on the Weak because when Prey on the Weak is in and we apply a curse, the enemy becomes vulnerable. And then we do increased damage with vulnerability. So every time we dash, they become vulnerable and then we do increased damage to them. You can see I have four evades and that is because we have Ghost Walkers. Now, with Flicker Step, you can still do this, just not as many in a row depending on the monster density of the mob. But as you're doing attacks with this, your cooldown is reduced. So you can actually do this pretty often. But with the number of evade charges I have on Ghost Walkers, I just prefer that. So these two pair very, very well. Next is Ravenous. On a lucky hit, your attack speed increases by 40% uh, of your move speed. This is insanely good for Ball Lightning because we're just spamming. 
Now, the last and not least is our flex spot. There's a few here. I'm going to show you some that I've used and tested. I ended on in dying because every single time that we cast a skill, we heal. So this helps keep us alive on top of our, our insane armor number, okay? Now, if you don't want to run Undying, you can run Sanjuane Embrace. Every time you kill somebody, you fortify, and then you get an increased crit strike. This is very good. You can still rock this, especially with our new armor. Having a fortify shield on there would be insane. Uh, the other options are Anticipation because our ultimate uh, skill cooldown will be reduced by 20%. That's very, very good, especially if you're going to rock like Flicker Step. I would definitely put Anticipation in there, so that way you can just have even more or better uptime on Unstable Currents. Uh, you can do Resilience and High Level Nightmare Dungeons for even more damage reduction if you would like. You can do he very rare cases. You can do uh, Hemo. I mean, it's very, very rare, but this is one that you can use. And then last but not least, you could do a Curse Touch. This is another way to apply a Curse. It gives you a really good opportunity to apply Curses, which again, paired with Prey on the Weak, makes them vulnerable, and we do all of our increased damage. So you really have a lot of options here. I settled on Undying. I really like it. I stay alive. It's really hard to kill me. So uh, now let's go into the Paragon board. We're not going to go over this in depth, guys. You can definitely check out the build link down in the description below over on Mobilytics. All this will be there. I'm just going to showcase some of the main things that we're rocking and just show you kind of how we put the build uh, the board together. So we're doing all the burning effects. So we got Flame Feeder for more damage and increased damage against burning. On this board, we're doing Elemental Summoner and we're going to be doing Control. This is required for the build. Then we're doing uh, Tactician. We don't have this max yet. We're still working on it, but it's going to make these two nodes here do increased damage to burning as well as more of our main stat, which is just going to give us more resistance as well as just give us more. Um, what is it? What's the other thing that intelligence gives? Uh, skill damage, which is huge for ball lightning. Uh, after that, after Tactician, we're going to come down and grab our Enchantment Master Board, and we're grabbing Territorial. Again, we're basically a melee build as a mage or a sorcerer, so the increased damage and damage reduction is huge here. Then we're going to be taking uh, Ceaseless Conduit, and we're going to be taking Destruction. Huge crit strike damage. We crit pretty often, so the crit strike damage here is insane. And then every single time that we crit, we do increase damage up to 12% multiplicative. It's kind of bonkers. Then on our last board, we're doing Static Surge, and we have Adept. This is really good because it gives us increased mastery skill damage, which that's what Ball Lightning is. And then the increased area of Ball Lightning is really nice as a secondary, but we really just have it for the mastery skill damage just to put it over the top. So that is the board. All of it will be down in the description below, guys. Make sure to like the video. This build is insane. It's arguably, in my opinion, the best build in the game. However... Uh, Rob is making a hard argument for that with some of the Barbarian builds. But yes, this is Ball Lightning that I'm loving for this season. I'm having the most fun. Like the video, comment down below. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.